Okay, we are live. So hello and welcome back, everybody. I hope you're doing well. And actually, you can tell me how are you doing in the chat. Um, I really missed streaming with you guys. So for the past few weeks, I was working on some videos for you. Therefore, I wasn't really able to join your stream uh, and to participate. But here I'm back. And uh, let's see what are we going to build today. Okay, so as you can see, we are going to continue building our crypto price tracker. And today's stream is going to be a little bit shorter, but it's going to be pretty interesting nevertheless, because I've seen few people asking to show exactly what are we going to build today. Okay, and it's candle charts, because what kind of crypto application doesn't have candle charts, right? So that's what uh, uh, that's going to be our main goal for today, basically to implement this candle chart with all the data that you see and filtering available. Also by having a possibility to change to a line chart. Also, I'll show you a little bit about React use callback and uh, it's not going to be a, a lot of that, but it's pretty important and I think interesting. On top of that, we're going to fix a few uh, pretty important, probably, bugs uh, that we left off from the previous episode. Yep, and as you remember, this application is built in Expo and JavaScript, uh, which is probably the easiest way to start working on React Native. And um, yeah, I always uh, uh, encourage you to join uh, Vadim's full stack mobile developer course and the link for that is academy.notjust.dev. He's putting a lot of effort into that and I think we should show him support and um, yeah. Also, if you want to uh, continue and follow me along, you can always download the asset bundle and uh, in GitHub repository, you can clone that and continue with me. Yes, yeah, so let's get started, guys. Before that, I just wanted to really ask you, how are you doing and how is your week? Where are you joining us from? Hello, Kim. Hello, David. Uh, yes, yeah, so how are you doing, guys? Let me know before. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's see. Okay, I have everything. So for now, I see that. Uh, hey, Catalin. Hello, hello. Say, say hi to our uh, new teammate. I say, I, I should say, Catalin. He's helping us a lot with all the videos and all the nice edits that you see in the videos. That's him. <laughs> so yes, uh, from Argentina. Hello, hello, guys. Hi, bro. I have completed all four parts and I can say I'm a React Native developer now. That's really, oh, that's really sweet. So this part is going to be interesting for you as well, I think. You, you will learn a little bit more. Not too much, but yeah. Doing good from Germany. Yeah, nice, nice. Hello, hello, Olatunda. Hey, Noor. Hey, Esteban. Wow, a lot of you guys here. That's really, really fun. Okay, I think we can uh, continue and jump into our video. So let me add this and make it that way. Yeah, so where we left off last time. Actually, I don't really remember where we left off because it was, um, yeah, a few months ago, I think, already. But uh, one, uh, yeah, Catalin, <laughs> cheers, everyone. Uh, so... Um, um, hello, where's Vadim? Vadim right now is, as always, working hard on his full stack developer course. So as I mentioned in the intro, go and join it. He's really putting a lot, a lot, a lot of effort into that. It's actually a little bit insane how much work he's putting in there. So yeah, let's appreciate that. And in the meantime, I will uh, take over some streams. Right. Okay. So first thing that we really need to do is um, to in our home screen we need to mention somewhere that we are um, 
that we're using CoinGecko API because that's one of their requirements if you're using their API. Therefore, I just will, on top of here, will men, uh, briefly mention powered by CoinGecko and that won't be too hard. So let's go to home index. Let's close this one. And in here in this, um, let's create a new view. Okay. Okay, so this view, as you probably remember, we need to make it, uh, no, not this one, flex direction at first row. Okay, nope, not this one. And then also justify content, we need to have space between them. Also, we will create a new uh, text, yes. And it will say simply powered by coin eco. Actually, we released this application on Android, Google Play and App Store. So you can always go and download it. Uh, the video from uh, how to upload your application to the App Store is still not out, but it will be out very soon. I think um, next week, somewhere like that. Yeah, and how to upload your application to Google Play Store. It's already live on the channel. So go and check that out. Okay, let, uh, home screen. let's save this. Yes, so we right now can see that this text is here, but because it's black, we can't really see too well. So first thing that we need to do is set color to white. Save it. Okay, here it is. Now I think it's uh, not aligned properly. So let's add align items center okay now it's aligned properly and uh, we need to add i think i want this a little bit more smaller this font so let's make font size and also congico has a rule that it cannot be less than 10 but so we are making it 12 i think that's more than enough for us also i think white maybe it's um let's make it light gray David, okay, I think I like this one a lot more. And we need some padding, horizontal, let's make it 10. Voila, that's, uh, that's it. We just need to do that. Let's see comments. Uh, hello from Nigeria, wow, that's nice. Hello from Lithuania to all of you guys. Faisal, thank you very much for your donation. And I'm happy that you enjoyed all four parts. And I'm really, really glad for your kind words. Thank you very much. And I hope you'll enjoy this shorter stream as well with something a little bit more interesting uh, implemented. Okay, so first thing we, we are done with one uh, term that we had to meet in order to use CoinGecko API. That's good. Now we can continue a little bit more. And another problem that I found, actually I found it when I was testing on a real device is basically when I'm trying to add a new coin and let's say I want to uh, type something here and let me, uh, okay, toggle software keyboard. The keyboard is covering that button. So even if I click somewhere, something here, I am not able to save um, this uh, coin to my portfolio. So that's a really big issue and we need to fix that as soon as possible. So we can close this one go to portfolio screen, no, actually to add new asset screen and index, close here. And in here, we will simply have to add a thing called keyboard avoiding view. So this one will simply help us to, uh, everything that the keyboard hides to push it uh, up top. And in order to do that, let's wrap everything that we have here in that keyboard avoiding view, okay. And we will have to add a few more things here. So first of all, we need to uh, set keyboard vertical offset. And I've already tested that 80 works best uh, every time for me at least. So I will leave that. And we also need to set the behavior. And in order to do that, let's impo import platform because Android and iOS has a little bit different of a different uh, behavior. 
And therefore, we will make it behavior equals like that. And then we can specify if platform.os equals, uh, oh, equal, oh my God, equals iOS, then we want behavior padding. But if it's Android, we will simply say height. And let's save this. Okay. Um, Everything is correct here. And now let's try to close this one and reload it. Or maybe, let's see. Mm -hmm. So what's the problem here? Oh, behavior. I need to learn how to type And Here it is. Now we can click here, select a random to uh, token. And as we can see, our button is there, but let's select the proper token. So the one that I like a lot, uh, which is Solana. Here it is, add new asset and voila, as you saw, the button is fixed. So now we can close, uh, oh, so there are uh, more, the next video of uploading this crypto tracker app to the app store will be live on Tuesday. So stay tuned, so stay tuned, yes. So yeah, Catalin knows a lot more than I do already. And because yeah, he's working on that video editing and putting a lot of time. So we should appreciate it as well. Uh, good luck today. Thank you, Saif. Um, hello from Mars. <laughs> hello from uh, Earth as well to you. Um, hmm. What headphones do you use by the way? I use, uh, how are they called? Bose, yeah, Bose headphones. Hello, Lucas, X Dreamland. Oh, hello. I do remember you. You were actually joining every stream of mine. Uh, well, of mine, the, the ones that I was participating in at least. So uh, I'm glad to see you back. Uh, Faisal, thank you very much again. Wow, thank you very much for the, thank you very, very much for your donations. Please always update GitHub repository, Mr. Knight. Yes, we are trying to update GitHub repositories as soon as possible. So after I'm done, I'm pushing it to the GitHub and then Vadim tries to update it as soon as possible. We had some problems with, uh, um, yeah, we had some problems why we weren't able to update it right away, but now it's fixed and it will be updated fast. We'll upload this live video on the channel later. Yes, yes, we will upload this uh, video on the channel later on after I'm finished, actually right away features used in this build. So what we are going to implement is in this build is I'm going to quickly show you the main thing that we will work on is going to be um, this candle chart, uh, everything that you see here basically with all the filtering and so on. Can you make clone of Skillshare app? Mm, actually, that's a very good idea and we need to put that in our ideas list and we have a lot of them already. So we'll try to go to it uh, someday. Yes, the live stream always remain on the channel as normal videos. Yes. Okay. Gamers get so much donations, but programmers are underrated. Yeah, well, I probably, I think, yeah, maybe. I don't really watch that many gaming streams, so it's really hard for me to say, but I think, yeah, maybe. I agree with you, but I mean, uh, we're happy to help you. And that's the main reason why this channel even exists because you are guys interested in learning new things and we're interested in helping you to learn, to pass basically, uh, our knowledge as much as we have of it. So, yeah. Okay. So let's, we can continue, uh, Cool, we fixed this one, what's next? Right now, we also have one more bug that I've noticed. So basically, if you go to your watch list and you don't have any watch listed coins, and then if you drag it, you get all of the coins. And that's really bad, we don't need that. Uh, and in order to fix that, we need to go to screens, watch list screen, and in here, we, when we refresh, we always refresh no matter what. And by that, I mean, we fetch all of the coins, which is not correct behavior. We need to have a basically condition on when we want to refetch. And we want to refetch when watch list coin IDs dot length is bigger than zero. That means we watch listed at least one uh, coin and we need to fetch 
otherwise don't do anything. So let's save this. Let's uh, reload the application. Go to watch list. Now let's try to reload and nothing happens. That's very good. And if we go to, let's say our home screen, Ethereum, we watch list uh, coin and here it is. Perfect. We can go back, unwatch it. And now if we try to reload it, let's try. Okay, so that's that's not correct behavior. <laughs> as far as I remember, we that wasn't uh, happening. Let me go to watch list again, and it's not here. Okay, maybe we'll get into that as well. But now I think you're tired of seeing fixing bugs and we need to get into a our main feature of today, right? So first of all, what we're going to do is change the chart library that we use. Because first of all, this chart library had some issues and um, I found a better one. Actually, it's a pretty new one, so I'll uh, show it on the channel. Maybe you can give some support to that library and use it. But although this library is pretty nice, I found something called, um, let me go up top, React Native VACME charts. And it's really, really nice. And also the documentation is insane. So what we are going to do is simply copy uh, this, go back, open our terminal and do expo, sorry, expo, install React Native VACME charts. Let's click enter. Okay, let's wait a little bit. Faisal again, oh wow, thank you very much, man. You're really donating a lot today. So thank you very much for your support. Okay. Um, we even we've installed this new library. And now what we need to do is change uh, this one into that one. And we can remember that it's in coin detail screen in index. Yep. Let's go down. And what are we going to do is delete maybe just comment out or should I delete it right away? Well, I, I think I can right away delete this part where we uh, add chart path and chart dot, save it. And yep, it's gone. And now I will need to uh, add the new one. And how can I do that is by importing first of all, okay, we can follow their documentation. So we also need to install all of these things and in order not to forget, let's copy this, go here and do expo install. Okay. Yeah, it's done installing so we can continue uh, here and Simply how we can Im we need to import it by saying import line chart from React Native Vacuum Charts. So let's do that. Go up top. Where is our old library? Here it is. Let's import this new thing. Uh, and we can comment out this one because we will not use this uh, label anymore. And we can delete this chart provider and comment out for now this one because I know I will need uh, this. Uh, to copy this one, it will be a lot faster. Okay, we're uh, pretty good, doing pretty good. Let's go back. And simply, we need to import as well line chart provider. So we can copy this part and go back here. And we need to close the tag at the bottom. Is it the first thing? No, it's actually not the first thing that's imported. So it should be here. Uh, yes, close it like that. No, 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 no. Let's, yeah. Okay, this is, we can save it. Now let's go back and import the rest of the things where we had our, previously our uh, chart. And it was, I think it was here. We can change it if it's not. Let's save it. Go back to Expo Go, not just Crypto Tracker. And I think right now, yeah, it will crash because we don't have any data here. 
So we need to pass data. And what we will pass for now, we will actually let's pass uh, empty array for now. Let's go to perform. Uh, no, no, no. Let's go to uh, coin. Yeah, and we don't have anything here. So that's good. We I I'm trying to remember what was the uh, shortcut to clean up everything. Mm. Mm -hmm, maybe this one. Yes, I think this one. Command Shift F. Yeah. Okay. So let's save it. And now we need to get somehow the data uh, here. And as we can see from their library, the data that they take is a lot different than uh, than what we have. They need a. No, it's actually completely the same. But <laughs> because I was thinking about candlestick chart. About line chart, it's completely the same, but we need to uh, name it differently. So it will be named timestamp for date and value for actual value. So let's go back here and we will basically copy this one and pass it here. But just we, for our sake, like say timestamp and value. And here the same timestamp and the value. Let's save it. Okay, we have this chart. Right now it's black, so we will have to uh, change it a little bit and we can delete this provider now completely. So we need to add some styling here. And in order to do that, we can simply actually, let me check. Yeah, we simply need to adjust our line chart, which we have here. So let's add some spaces between in order for you to be easier to concentrate where I'm trying to show you what. And yeah, we need to add, first of all, as you remember, uh, we had, for example, if uh, it's minus today, we need we make this uh, red. But if it's a good day, a plus day, then we are making it uh, green, right? So we already have uh, that and uh, we just simply need to pass the color in for line path. And so in order to do that, simply do color, open this and pass. I think it's called, how did we call it? Uh, chart color, yes. Okay, so let's copy it, pass it here. Let's save it. It's right, perfect. Now we need to also make it a little bit um, smaller, the whole chart, because it, I think it takes too much space. So in here, we will simply pass height and the height we will pass the same as previously. We will divide screen width uh, by two. Let's save it. Perfect. And also we will say width, which is already correct, but just for uh, safety, we will pass screen width as the full width. Perfect. That's good. But right now we are not able to scroll and see the prices correctly, right? So what we need to do is under line chart path, import a line chart dot cursor crosshair, like just like that. And we will save it for now. And as you can see, it's working, but the cursor is black. So simply pass color, chart color, and let's save it. Okay, now the cursor is uh, red. And I like this library a lot more. Look at how nicely it goes back to its place after you release the button and also how smoothly it um, traverses through the graph. So I like it very much. And now we also need to make it, uh, in order to see what price is it on this particular spot, we need to implement the label, right? And it's very easy as well. It's actually, this library is pretty similar to what we had before in terms of how it's implemented. So in here, we will say line chart dot price text, and we can close it off. We can now, okay, now we need style to pass the same styles as we had before. Okay, and we will also need to format this, but we will, need to format it a little bit differently. Let's paste this one, we can delete this one. And I'm not going to save right now because we will have to adjust this 
format currency um, a little bit. And uh, instead of just passing this value like that, we will wrap it in, uh, in this structure because it's passing to this, um, to this function uh, object with value. And I don't remember what, but it's not that important for us. We only need value here. Okay, so now we can see the price. And if we traverse, we can see the price change. Perfect. We have everything like we had before, but with a better library, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, with a better library. Okay, that's good. But now we need to implement, as I said, um, candlestick library. And also I've mentioned that we will keep both charts and uh, we will have one button in order to select with which uh, chart we want to show. And we will simply do that by importing in this, um, in our filters, under, the, under all of them, importing one more icon. So let's go to React Native um, Vector Icons, actually Expo. So. Okay, and in here we can say line chart, maybe something like this. Uh, uh, um, nope, so let's do chart. I had it, I have somewhere in my notes. Yeah, show chart, here it is. I want this one, so let's copy it, go back. Uh, uh, also, we can delete all of these because we're not using it anymore and paste our icon, material icons. Let's go back to our filter. Where is it? Uh, here it is. And we can copy this one, go back and simply paste it here. Let's save it. Perfect, we have it here. But we also want to change the color from this to our green color. I think it's this one. So let's go back, uh, here it is like that and save it. Perfect. Now, for now we will leave it like that. And uh, also we need one for one icon for candle chart. So if we click on this, um, right, instead of showing this, it will show candlestick chart. And when we click on it, it will change to uh, this. And uh, the other icon that we will use is, I can see it in my notes, it's waterfall chart. And I wasn't able to find anything better, to be honest, than this. It looks at least something similar to um, candlestick so chart. So I hope it will be good enough for you <laughs> as well. Um, OK, perfect. We have these two icons. Later on, we'll make some changes. But now we need to somehow get the data for our candle um, candlestick chart bar. Uh, candlestick chart, yes. Uh, and it will be a little bit different that we were getting right now because we need to get, you can see in their library, we need to get the timestamp, uh, the open uh, of the candle, the highest point of the candle, the lowest point of the candle, and also at which price it closed. So in crypto uh, API documentation of CoinGecko, they have completely the thing that we need which is this one, get coins o -A -O -H -L -C. We can try it out simply by passing, for example, ID Bitcoin in USD and also one day. Let's execute it. And here it is, we get the data that we need. So let's copy this URL, go back and open our services. Here it is. And in here, let's create uh, one more uh, one more function. So let's export const get candle stick uh, candle chart data. I think this will be a good name. Okay, and we need to wrap it in try and catch. Okay, let's do this. And also console log if there is some sort of an error. Okay, and in here, let's do like everything before await. I remember previous stream, I forgot to add this await and it took a lot of time to figure out what was the problem. Yes, uh, let's 
paste this one and here it is. Okay, we maybe have too much space here. Yep, perfect. Okay, but we still need to take some of the data. And first things first, what we need is coin ID. So let's do that. Let's take coin ID as a parameter. And also we need to take um, of how many days you want this data. So we will say days and also make it by default um, one. Yes, I think let's make it by default one. And also in this, uh, URL will have to make some changes instead of this Bitcoin. We will pass uh, not not this one. This one. Mm. Coin ID. Why? Okay. So oh yes, it's not. It shouldn't be a, sing, a simple string. It needs to be this little thing under the escape button however it's called i never knew how this uh, symbol is called to be honest so coin id that's good and also instead of one pass days yes perfect and now okay i saved it i shouldn't do that yet but let's go here and also we need to make this function asynchronous as far as i as i can see here from the error and also simply return uh return response dot data okay let's save it perfect we have this one so we can go back and let's see comments um please make a video uh how to eject from expo expo eject command didn't work for me okay that's actually pretty interesting maybe we will write a blog about expo eject or maybe even make a full video mm -hmm. Sudoku with React Native. I think uh, Vadir might like this idea. Hi, good night all. Hello, hello, uh, the uh, Hoodhi Academy. Welcome. Vaman, hello, I'm from India. I learned so many things. Thank you very much. I'm, we are really, really glad that you're learning something new and you're enjoying doing that. That's very important. Never stop learning. Yes. Um, Hi guys, hey, hey. Okay, so as far as I can see, everything is clear for now, so we can continue working. Now what we need to do is instead of, uh, instead of uh, getting only the um, fetched market coin data, we also need to get this new thing uh, that we get this new candlestick chart data. And what we will do is actually very similar to what we have here. So let's create another function, const fetch candle uh, stick chart data. It will have to be asynchronous. And we will need to pass selected range value as well. So let's do this. And now const uh, fetched selected Handle stick chart data. Wow, that's a long name. <laughs> Maybe let's make it simple candle chart data. And do a wait. Also, I forgot to import it. Where is it? Here. Get uh, um, handle chart data. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go back where I was. Here. Okay. Get candle chart data and we will need to pass coin ID as well as selected range value. Okay, that's good. And simply set and set because we don't have that yet. We have coin market data and we will make coin candle chart data and also Let's simply copy this one, paste here, and make it lowercase. Voila. <laughs> Where is it? In here. Set point candle chart data to fetched candlestick chart data. No, I think something is incorrect. So this one. Yeah. And let's save it. Okay. Um, so now we will need to include this little uh, function in a few places. 
first of all, we need to get it on when we open the screen. So let's do it here and simply say fetch candlestick chart data. Okay. And um, yeah, let's save it. Now we also need to import this uh, function after we change the selected range in our filters. So let's go to that function that we, here it is, and simply do uh, fetch candlestick chart data with selected range value and save it. Now we can console log if we're getting anything. So let's see, candle, uh, and no, how did we call it? Coin candle chart data, here it is. Let's save it, let's go to our, here it is. Yep, we're getting the data that we need, perfect. Let me drink some water. Okay, now we can we can see that we're getting the data, so we can simply uh, delete this console log and go to go back to uh, this library and see how are they implementing candlestick chart data, right? And it's pretty much very similar. So we can copy all of this, go to our line chart, make some space here. Also, let's fix it with uh, Command Shift F. And we can we know that this data is incorrect, but actually it will fail because we didn't import it yet. Uh, where is our line chart? Here it is. Handle stick chart, perfect. Uh, da, da, da. Where is our? Here it is. And now we will need to pass the data very similar, very similarly. <laughs> yes, to how were, were we doing previously, but. It we will need to pass a lot more things. So let's do that. And uh, coin candle chart data dot map through all the values. And in here, let's destructure. Um, we will need to take timestamp, if you remember. That was the first one. Now, the second thing we will need to take open. Then we will need to take uh, the high highest point of the candle. Yes. Then the lowest point of the candle and also uh, close. Okay, perfect. Let's go like this. And then simply just pass it like that uh, with timestamp, open, high, low, not loading, low, and close. Okay, let's save it and see, okay, what's, maybe I've made a, uh, Undefined is not an object. Evaluating ref dot high. Okay. Let's see. Do I am I doing it? Coin candle chart data is this one. Yeah. Coin candle chart data, right? Oh, so there is one also one more thing. We need to check if that data is already there as well, because we need that. Maybe that's not the why we are getting this error, but we have to have this one. And let's open, let me check it once again. I think I might know. Yes, we are not returning this. So we need to also to return it. Let's, uh, okay, let's do this. Let's go, perfect. Now it's not failing and we can see very ugly for now, but we can see the candlestick chart. Perfect. Now we can work on improving it. First of all, it's definitely too, too high, <laughs> too big. <laughs> So let's do the same screen width divided by two. And I made a mistake. Uh, yes. Save it. Okay. Yes, that's al already a lot better. And simply width will be equal to screen width. Perfect. Let's save it. Okay, now we also uh, want some more things in here. So first of all, what I need is to have some something to track where I am on this chart and what was the price on that candle. And in order to do that, we simply have to underneath this, underneath this candle, go and do 
uh, ch uh, candle candlestick chart dot crosshair close it like that and in here do candlestick chart dot tooltip close it save it and voila we have the price on each table on each candle so we can drag it a little bit and see okay what was the price uh, at this point right perfect now we want we want to see more data here for example i want to see when did it close when did it open and on this for example this particular candle and what was the time when it happened and in order to do that under this candlestick chart provider so we are out of uh, candlestick chart go a little bit below and uh, simply do view and we will pass candlestick chart dot price text like we did previously but now we need to specify the type so the type for example in this place i want to see open time and okay i can see it but i know you are not able so i will change the style quickly and the style will be white so uh, color actually color will be let me okay white and also I'll make it a little bit bigger. So font weight will be 700. Let's save it. Oh yeah, it should be a string. Let's save it. And we can see already the open price. That's very good. So we need for open. We also need it for the highest uh, of the candle, then the lowest point of the candle. And also when did it close? And I'll add one more for date. So we'll make some changes here. Instead of having here open, we will have high, type of high. And in here, we will have type of uh, low. Then close. And the last one will be simply, oh, actually, the last one will not be candlestick uh, price text. It will be date time text. Yes. And we don't need to pass the type that way. So let's save it okay and we can see all the different data but for now it's it doesn't look that good right so we will have to adjust it a little bit uh, by first of all making them creating a flex direction of row flex direction per row let's save it okay that's good well almost good not exactly but also i want to take this uh, date out of this yeah, this one let me see yeah that's good it's almost good but we also want to add some space between all of the data so just by content space between let's save it okay it's starting to shape up a lot better but i want to add some margin horizontal and margin on top let's add margin horizontal uh, of uh, 10 and margin top 20. Let's see how it looks. Okay, yes, I like that a lot more. But now I, I also want to uh, adjust a little bit this daytime and I want to add margin around all of it 10. Let's save it. Perfect. That's looking very, very nicely. Okay, that's very good. But right now, as you remember this, we are repeating ourselves so much by just passing it that way. And we already have this styles uh, file created. So let's quickly make some uh, styles predefined in our style sheet. So we will call it candle stick uh, text. And uh, what do we have here? We have color and font weight, simply. So let's cut it out. Do styles.candlestick text. And in here, oh no, I accidentally pressed the wrong button. So yes, like this. I'm misclicking so much today. <laughs> okay, styles.candlestick text, yes. And in here, paste everything like that let's save it 
and also let's uh, save it here. Yep, everything is correct. And I will simply pass this one in every one of them. Okay. And also here. No, here I won't do that because it has some margin. So let's save it. Okay, that's very good. And we also have a for this one. So we will call it candlestick um, data container. Okay, let's go back here. Let's copy everything that we have here. Cut it out. You can close this one for now. Styles dot candlestick container. Go back, paste all of it here. Okay, let's save it. Perfect. We have it here. Uh, um, hmm, let me see. Should I do it for this one as well? Okay, I'll leave this one in line in order not to waste your time. Let's check the comments. Code Cafe, hello. Thank you very much. Hi, and thank you for your kind words. Hi from Mexico. Wow, thank hello, hello from Lithuania as well to you. Um, oh, wow, Code the Ivory. That's really, really far. Whoa, nice, very nice. I can't. Hello, hello, the comedy band. Hello, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the stream and uh, it's not too boring because I'm really enjoying working this and yeah, we are still have some things to do and some interesting, I, I think, things to do. So let's get back to working, right? Okay, we have uh, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit done here. But now we don't want to display these two charts, uh, one like near another, right? We want them as we talked in the uh, at the start. After you click here, we want to change the actual chart that we are showing to the user. So in order to do that, let's go to our state and create a new state. And we will call it is handle chart uh, visible, something like that. Now we can say set. And at first it won't be visible because the default one will be line chart as we had it previously. So let's save it. Okay, and we want to show only one icon here. So let's go uh, a little bit down. Where is it? Where is oh, here? It is. So we will say if um, handle uh, chart is visible, then we want to show. Uh, then we want to show line chart. Yes, but if it is not visible, then we want to ch show candle chart. like that and paste it in. Let me fix it, save it, perfect. So we need to do the same for our charts. Let's go down here and in here, we will say something like, if is candle chart visible, then we will show uh, the candle candlestick chart paste it here. And if it is not visible, then we will show this one. Okay. Let's save it. And yes, we see this one for now. And we see this one. Perfect. But right now we should be able to change it. And in uh, how we will do that is simply for our icons here, pass on press parameter. And when you click on it, we will a function which will set is handle. Hmm, why well, don't get suggestion? I don't remember how I've written it. <laughs> here it is. Let's copy it. Let's paste it here. And if I click on a line chart, then I should set it to false. But if I click on, let's copy this one. If I click on this candle chart, I should set it to true. Okay. Let's save it and let's try clicking here. Perfect, that's really good. I like it a lot. I think we need to add some more space under this filter component. So let's go to filter container and uh, 
Uh, um, uh, no, no, no. Let's just simply do margin bottom 10. Maybe even more, 20. Yeah, I like that a little bit better, I think. Yes. Okay, let's close this one. Perfect. We have this. We can change between different uh, bars, but we have this big space here. And I also, when I'm scrolling, I don't really know where uh, what data is. So let's go down here and we'll have to make some slight adjustments uh, in our uh, yeah price text components. So let's wrap it in a view. Okay. Do tab and be, uh, above all of them, I will want to have a simple text component which will say what this is showing to us. So let's do text, and now I will say this one is showing open because it is. Also, I will pass some. Uh, first of all, let me create a new style object which will be called candlestick. Uh, text label, okay, uh -um. and yeah, style equals styles that, I didn't save it here, candlestick text label, yes, and in here, in that text label, I will want to make it gray, and I will want to make it a little bit smaller so smaller by one which is 13 because the default one is 14. let's save it here okay perfect we can see this open here and that's what i want for all of them so let's copy this one and also i need to wrap this in a view as well so let me just do uh that for all of them voila Perfect. Yes. Okay. And now just simply paste under all of them this text component. Save it. Yes. All of them have a uh, label, but now we need to specify okay, this one is high, this one is low, this one is close. And for date, I won't do anything because it's pretty self explanatory what it is showing. Okay, that's very good. And one limitation with this library, there's no nice way of, for now, because this library is very, very uh, young. Uh, uh, and Angel, yes, yes, you can uh, ask a question. Uh, yeah, so there is one limitation. I'm not able to determine whether I cl I have clicked here or if it's not uh, tapped, I should say, for candlestick. For line chart, there is a way. But yeah, so we probably need to wait a little bit for their next update and we'll see how uh, then we can make an update. There is ways that we can go around, but it will be hacky solutions and I don't really want to do that. And Nevertheless, this one doesn't look that bad having these because then it's not an empty space here. So we can yeah, go through this, for example, uh, candle and see that it opened at $3,083. The highest one uh, was 3,108. The lowest one was almost the same as opened and it closed with the highest one. So that's very nice. Also, we can click, uh, for example, to show, show seven days charts, and it is filtering according to that. So it's working perfectly. I can go, for example, to Solana. For now, I see the line chart. Let's open the uh, candle chart, and I can see all of the data that I want. Change the filter. Voila. Now change the chart, and I can still see on uh, filtered on seven days just how we want it. Perfect. So uh, for now, everything, if I remember correctly, is working and 
we've implemented as much as we as I wanted today to show you because actually I remember a lot of people were asking to see how we can implement candle chart and if it's possible asking like for libraries that can help you with that so yeah here it is simple as that perfect uh, now there is one more thing that I will try to do and let me go to um where I wanted to go here, here, filter component here. Let me try to console. Uh, I will try to, because right now, let me show you, let's save it and let's go to some, um, okay. We can close this one, we can close this one and we can clean this one. So now you see it's empty, right? But if I go here and I type anything here, so let's do, say it always uh, thinks that it always re-renders this component so if i click it again it's again re-rendering all of the components even though i'm not really doing anything with that component i'm not clicking on here in order to re-render which is a little bit um a performance it sucks out performance a little bit from our app now this app is not that big to really care about that but if you try to let it go from the start, then it will be really hard to make it uh, work later on when you need that the most performance that you can get from your application. And I've showed you in the previews that you can use something like Memo, but it, not, it will not always work. So I will try to show you how to use callback. And in order to do that, we need to create a new function called const, and we will make it Memo, um, and this one simply. Okay. Okay. So, and now what we will do here is simply take the range. So we will pass in the this selected range value here, and we will call this function here. And we will pass the range here. Perfect. And pass the dependencies the same as in use effect. Let's save this one. And um, okay, let's reload and go to where are we changing our filters? Uh, 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 here, instead of this one, let's pass memo on selected change. And let's see if it will work here. I remember I've done it previously and it worked, but now we implemented so much. Okay, what's the problem here? Oh, yeah, I need to do here react use callback. So instead of having this actual function like we have it here, I can delete this and have it, I'll make it maybe from the start, do react.callback, use callback. Don't forget, use callback. Now let's do the same as we did. We take range. We pass it to our actual function here and pass the dependencies. Okay, let's save it. Render more hooks than in the previous one. Okay, we'll see. Let's open this and see what is the problem. Uh, oh, okay. I think it's because we are, yeah, I know. It's because we are uh, rendering it a little bit too late. Uh, here it is. We need to do it uh, before checking all of this because at first it will go uh, to this coin detail page. It will check if, but do I need that all of that data? Let me check. Yeah, it will check. Okay, it's still loading. That means I'm not going to render anything below because I'm returning this activity indicator. And the next time it renders, it already, it's not loading. We have the coin, we have all the data necessary and it goes here and it sees this, um, this hook, which is one more than we had in our first render. So let's save it, go here. Okay, now it's loaded. Let's delete everything and see, for example, if I click to, you see, I don't have anything here. It's not re-rendering um, 
our filter component because we memoized it. We remember that this function is, uh, we need to only call it after it changes itself. So for example, if I click uh, seven days here, it will call it and it will rerun, uh, re render this filter component because I actually clicked here and we need to re render because we changed the date. But if I try to type this one, it's not re rendering anymore. So that's how you save a little bit of performance, but also you need to be um, careful on when you use it because too much of that in not really important places is also bad because you sacrifice memory over performance. I think we are going to either write a blog about all of these or make a video. But yeah, this is basically why you would use that in order to have a little bit uh, of a better performance. Um, hmm. How can we, okay, so how can we update candlestick chart live like real time updates to existing chart and auto scroll? Right. I don't really understand if I get your question. In order to update it live, well, yeah, that one is, we would probably need to have our own backend and subscribe to the changes. Let me close this keyboard uh, toggle, yes. Because right now we're just using CoinGecko data and it will only update after you go and reload it like this. Yes, so I've showed you what I wanted today. And as I said, it won't be as long of a stream as um, we used to do it. And it's because, well, we had a little bit different plans for today, a little bit maybe more interesting stream, but Sometimes it happens that you are not able to do it because of some certain circumstances. And yeah, so we had to change a little bit of the plans. And I remember that, yeah, candlestick chart would be really cool to implement and also show, show you how to use, use callback. Okay. Yeah, guys, do you have any more questions? It's a short one for today, and I think that's good. I think it will be easy to follow along, and you can watch some more videos uh, on our channel to learn. It's Friday, so yeah. <clears throat> mm. Okay, I'm trying to read. Like we uh, like suppose we have data for one day, one month, one year. Yes, and now when the market time starts, we will be getting a live candlestick market data, open, high, low, low, close. Now, how should we add this live data to existing? Uh, <laughs> let me read it again. Like suppose we have data for one day, one month, one year. And now when we when the market time starts, yes, we will be getting live candlestick market date. Open, high, low, close. No, I, I really don't, I'm sorry, but I really don't understand. What do you want, to, uh, what's your question? Um, should I learn uh, JavaScript before React Native? I don't really think so. You can start uh, learning React Native right away. I think, you, um, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can start learning React Native right away and you will learn all the necessary. That's actually how I started. I knew JavaScript a little bit before, but it wasn't like uh, something that I knew very, very well. So I just said, okay, let me start with React Native and then I'll learn React Native and then I'll learn Jav JavaScript. So maybe it's a little bit uh, the other way around, like all most of the people would do, but yeah, 
I learned it that way. And I think, yeah, you can learn JavaScript later on. For to have foundational knowledge, yes, but yeah, as I said, like I had very, very basic knowledge of JavaScript, probably something that you learn very early in your, uh, if you're studying, for example, software engineering. So I think it wouldn't, it didn't really help me that much later. So yeah, when I started with React Native. Does this chart library work with Bear React? Yes, yes, it does work with uh, Bear React Native CLI. Yeah, I don't know, guys. So I don't really have anything else planned for you today. I think that's uh, where I am going to end the stream today. That's probably one of the shorter streams in, on this channel. But it's quality over quantity, right? <laughs> Okay, guys, I've really uh, enjoyed all of you here, uh, all of your kind words, your donations, and your actually uh, willingness to learn something new and to be a better programmer every day. So that's a re even on like a Friday evening, uh, joining a stream where most of the people are just in a bar or somewhere. So that's very, very, I think, good sign of uh, going towards the right direction. Yes, uh, that was my motivational speech of the day, of the evening, I should say. And thank you guys for uh, joining. Thank you for staying with me and have a nice evening. Bye.